Real Country, 1430 AM and 107.3 FM, WRDN. Good Friday morning. I'm Brian Winnikins as we wrap up our uh, week-long spotlight with the Weiss family. Don Weiss joining us once again. Thank you to Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin as well for uh, supporting these uh, broadcasts. We'll do another one next month as well. And uh, we're going to continue our conversation with Don again. They do a lot of different things here at the farm, and they like to work with Extension, and Extension likes to work with them. And you're, you're also part of the, the Farmers for Health Watershed group, yep, right? I am. Yeah, I've been, it started out with a water advisory group, something like that. They call it WAGS or something like that, years and years ago. And we weren't getting anywhere with that. And uh, talking with Mike Travis, I don't know how many years it's been, four, five, something like that. He suggested that we start a um, watershed group for Pepin County. And so I kind of spearheaded that and got that going, kind of backed away a little bit more. And Tom Brenner's kind of heading it up right now. Um, but yeah, that's that's been a, a, a big thing um, that we've put on many meetings for Trevor Crops, got many speakers, and we've done. Um, uh, you know, doing, um, oh, what would I say? It's helping people, you know, con encouraging people to do it by adding some incentives. That's what I want to say. Incentives, you know, do the um, maybe 40 acres of cover crop. All your costs are covered by the watershed group. Um, Pivot Bio, if you want to do that. We've uh, actually done some Sumer Grove trials, um, and stuff was paid for by the by the watershed group. It's It's... We keep trying. It's a it's a battle, but it's something I feel strongly that we we need to do and keep trying to do and keep trying to promote it and and keep trying to get people to be involved. But it's a tough thing. It's but it's nobody knows the right thing is the the, the big thing, and nobody knows exactly where all the problems are coming from. But where we have a I'll let you go with that. But I mean, just we'll. I mean, we're, we're trying to do the right things, basically. Okay, so we have here at the farm lysimeters. I said it right. So lysimeters. What, one, what is a lysimeter, and what, what are they doing here in the farm? Well, right now there's eight of them uh, actually buried behind the Lima Church, and they're below the soil profile, so they, they're not interfering with anything, but they're plates stainless steel plates that are porous and as things go through the soil profile or liquids go through the soil profile it captures them and then um, like right now I think every two weeks somebody from I think Pepin County goes out there and pulls pulls the samples out and we determine say if we spread urea today they'll see how much of that goes through the they'll actually is leaving the the root zone of the plants if we do cover crops is it holding it there um it, it's we've we've tried for, for right now i think this is our third year we're just trying to find a baseline of what's you know where it should be maybe next year we're actually going to start doing some some uh some testing you know one side because they're 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 quite a ways apart, so we'll be able to set put one, and maybe spread manure on it, and one of them not, one of them put cover crops on, one of them not. You know, we're going to start doing testings like that and see what actually comes through the soil pro profile, and 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 figure out tr hopefully try to figure out what we can do right that will avoid our leaching of nitrates, manure, whatever. I mean even you know, even your phosphorus and, and potassium, you know, most times those things don't move in the soil. They move on top of the ground. But, you know, that, I think there's some of that stuff going through the pro, pro soil profile. But we're, we're trying to look at different things the, to stop it. Like I said, cover crops, maybe a different cover crop. You know, actually planting, we're thinking about trying to do, because uh, uh, usually we take plant cover crops after you harvest. We're actually, I think this year, talking with Tom that maybe we'll do some aerial like two weeks before we harvest. Get get the seed down into the corn and actually see what it, you know, get it growing ahead of time. Because that's a lot, a lot of times that is the problem. It's, 
we get a early winter or uh, we get a, a late late harvest or whatever, and it, the cover crops don't have a time to actually get established decent to do some good. So we're going to actually try some aerial seeding this year to to get some uh, some results on that. Hopefully, I mean it's 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 kind of cool. I mean. It's it's a it's another thing that like I said we're just trying to figure it out and trying to figure out the right thing. I don't know if we ever will, but we're gonna keep trying as long as we keep working with Discovery Farms because they're the ones that have put it put them in there and and you know they're they're the ones that are backing it all and are trying to they're 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 doing it uh, as well as we are. To, there's three of them in the, in the state that are trying to get it. For figure things out you know the because well if we don't do something it, it's gonna be trouble where you know water is the main thing we need to drink and it's, if we don't you know I mean a reverse osmosis is good but I don't know at a, some point it don't do no good no more you almost got to do it twice and I, I don't know if those systems are good enough to do that but yeah I, we're just trying to figure it out is what we're trying to do with these things and I'm glad that you know uh you know, Discovery Farms came out there and asked us to do this because it's it's been a big thing for us, and we've been and trying to figure it out. And because, like I said, I got kids and got grandkids that you know, if our if hopefully there's an eighth generation here that, and hopefully they can drink the water without running through us a reverse osmosis system. But we'll see, we'll see. And it, that's so. When Discovery Farms they called you up and said, "Hey, can we do this?" It was pretty much a pretty simple. When are you going to be here? Why aren't you here right now? Is that pretty much how that decision went? Well, it it, it started out to where they they wanted to put it on a different farm that we rented, and the guy said, "Well, he says I don't know if I want that on my farm." And then it went to another farm, but that was too close to the water table, and and then it ended up to be behind the line of church there, where um, because the church has a nitrate issue where they have a a modern commercial reverse osmosis system there so they were able to get the money funding and uh to help that situation or to make hopefully make that situation better and but you know it was it was something that needed to get done and and uh so yeah we were i was i was there and from the beginning when they first called and yeah, we'll do it, but you know we got to make sure this landowner's okay with it. But it just it didn't work out that way, so I ended up going on our farm anyway. So, <laughs> so so the the the, the aerial seating, Comrose ain't going to be having planes coming out of their airport. <laughs> I'm just I'm or, or are you going to go for a ride in there? <laughs> well, you know we've we've talked I've talked with Bob, and you know if we need to you know stage a a loading area, Bob said that you know. He's more than willing to, to let us use his air his air strip, you know, to land there and load and then you know because they can only hold so much. It's not a it's not a where you can do enough for 100 acres. You're probably going to do enough for you know maybe 50 acres at the most, but or 30 acres. I don't I don't even know for sure what they can handle, but that's that stuff is heavy. So you know, and I'm sure we might have to do that or do something like that. But yeah, they're they're doing it already, but there's so many. There's a lot of obstacles, you know, you hear, you know, where guys have done it and it's the greatest thing in the world. Then the next guy, not, nothing grows because they didn't get enough moisture to sprout the seed on top of the ground because everything's laying on top of the ground. But you, you should be, maybe not last year, but this year, we got plenty of moisture. So <laughs> it would probably work perfect this year until it, unless it dries up and gets dry around about the time it needs to really, really rain. But we'll see. We'll see. We're going to try it. <laughs> Something we're definitely going to have to look forward to. Don Weiss, thank you again to Don and his entire family for allowing us uh, to get a little look inside the Weiss family farms. And also thank you to Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin for sponsoring uh, these uh, spotlights. We'll do another one at the end, the last full week of August is when we'll have our next uh, Dairy Farm Family Spotlight with Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin and WRDN.